You've been on the Tribor Trail for about half a day. As you come around the bend, you spot two dead horses sprawled about 50 feet ahead of you, blocking your path. Each has several black feather arrows sticking out of it. The woods press close to the trail here, with a steep embankment and dense thickets on either side. You hear a goblin laughing. This is how Lost Minds of Phandelver starts with the first combat encounter and the first terrain piece that the Game Master should place on the table is a cart. I've been playing D&D for a couple of years already and the one thing that always is present is a cart with some horses or oxes. So this time I will be showing a quick way to create a cart for your games. I purposely left the object small so that it can be carried around. Most of the D&D characters might usually buy a cart with some kind of hood or a canopy on it, but this way the model can be used in a broader ways. The craft will be completely done with XPS foam and hot glue. So let's get started. First I cut the base area of the card and pressed it in a bit to make it more sturdy and thin. If I was to just make it thin just by cutting, it would bend and break too easily. So this is a good way to make your XPS crafts a bit more sturdy without necessarily destroying the texture and usability of the material. Then I used aluminium foil and a knife to create the wooden planks as a texture on it. Also remember to make the same trick on the sides of the cards. I left the bottom untouched since I don't believe this card will get turned around any time. I have made a catapult with pretty much the same techniques as this and it turned out quite nice. It was a bit more detailed than this and took a bit more time but the process was mostly the same. For the wheels I used the same trick. First cut the pieces a bit too thick and after the cutting was done I pressed the wheels down to make them even thinner. I made some metal strips on the wheels to make them look more robust. Next up the gluing part. I had all the parts ready at this point so I could just glue all the pieces together so that I wouldn't have to keep the hot glue gun waiting hot while I was texturing or cutting the rest of the pieces. It's funny how the card is usually a terrain object we have to proxy with my friends with some barrels or a rocker in our D&D games even though the card is pretty much the one object that is present in all of the roadside encounters but better late than never as they say, now I finally have a card for our games. After that I had to text the rest of the parts that were still untouched. For painting I used an orangey brown, I mixed yellow, red and a bit of blue to achieve this. For the base coat it's quite good. I also used some burnt sienna on top of that to make it look more like wood. Next I mixed the same brown I had with a bit more yellow and also added white to the mix and used this for dry brushing all the wooden parts. Quite many people make the mistake of using only white for dry brushing, it will look good on stony area of course, but for wood you will have to use a light brown for the dry brush. And same goes with any color, you can use white for all the parts. I paint the metal parts of the card black and once they were dried I dry brushed them with white. Finally for some detail I used metallic silver paint to create the nails on some parts of the card to make it look more realistic. Usually even just small details will make the whole object look even better. For example, if you just were to place one barrel on this card, it would 
look much more alive after that one so even small details will make a whole lot of difference let me know what you think in the comments below and thank you for watching i'll see you in the next video Thank you.